Hey, Brandon. Yeah. I'm hungry. Me too. I would like to eat, but I would like to eat in less than five minutes. <laughs> Same. I uh, think we can do it. Yeah, I think so. So this thing, this cool thing on the table right here is from Schwenk Grills. If you've ever watched the Food Network and seen them cook steaks or anything else on a salamander, this is pretty much what that is. It just goes on your back porch and it runs on propane and Alton Brown's not yelling at you. <laughs> I'll take Alton Brown yelling at me though. This is Alton, open invitation. Let's see if we can knock out some backyard steaks in a few minutes with a few thousand BTUs. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, so Brandon messaged me and said, I have somebody that wants to send us a grill. It gets up to how many degrees? 1200. 1200 degrees. And I was absolutely ecstatic to try it because in most of our backyard arsenal, we kind of tend to max out at about 900, which I think gives you a really, really great sear. Uh, but we grew up in a restaurant family and this is kind of a back of house specialty. Most things that you're eating at a high end steakhouse or whatever, they have one of these back there because it makes cooking steaks really, really fast. It's easy to get them done to temperature. So we're gonna give one a try in the backyard today. We're gonna pair some beautiful ribeyes with a little bit of resting butter. And Brandon's gonna walk us through a little bit how this bad boy works. All right, so like I said earlier, this is the Schwank. Um, it is basically a salamander, and how it works is it has two big burners up on top that burn propane. They're infrared burners, so it's not really a direct flame. It's kind of like, if you've ever seen one of those like camping lanterns, the bulb on the inside is called a mantle. So the same kind of technology here, that's how you get that high temperature. Now, inside of here, you can see there's a grate how that works is it raises up and down of the lever over there so that you can get as far away as you want from your steak uh, to get the best kind of sear on it. Now we've experimented with this a tiny bit, a very tiny bit, and determined that the best sear comes from just slamming the steak all the way to the top. Yeah. So I think that's what we're gonna do. But basically, that's what this thing is, is a box. Fancy broiler. <laughs> yeah, really fancy broiler, really expensive broiler too. These things aren't cheap, but let's, let's put a Fire steak on. Up. I'll burn my eyebrows off doing this. We're gonna crank this all the way to the top so we can get our grate preheating on the bottom as well as this broiler preheating on the top. Let this go for a couple of minutes. I've got two beautiful ribeyes. We're gonna cook them one at a time and we're gonna time ourselves a little bit because I've read a lot about cooking at this temperature. I've cooked pretty high before. I think we can get a beautiful medium rare in about 90 seconds to two minutes per side, which would put us really in that like three to four minute steak mark, which is almost comical in terms of speed. But I mean, eat that like air fryer in Instant Pot, right? Right. <laughs> So I'm just gonna season these with salt right before we put them on. I don't wanna do a full dry brine on these and I don't wanna use any extra seasonings. At 1200 degrees, basically anything you put on these will incinerate and it will blacken and it will turn bitter and it will be not delicious. So salt only on the steaks immediately before we put it on or if you wanna dry brine, put it on about an hour before and let that salt fully reabsorb into the meat. We want everything going in there to be dry, dry, dry so we get the best sear possible. So no seasonings, no moisture, steak, salt, that's it. Okay. I got one of these handy dandy infrared thermometers, um, but we have learned that it's not actually super useful in this particular application. Why is that, Brandon? Yeah, so most of these only go up to about 900 degrees. I'm not sure the temperature on this. Oh yeah, right here it says on the side, Thermoworks example here uh, goes up to 932 degrees. It's definitely hotter in there than that, 100%. Yeah, we're currently clocking about six, oh, eight, eight, six, eight. We'll give it like, 15 more seconds, and then I think we're ready to put that steak on. Yeah. I'm nervous. What? It goes so fast, I don't know, I just feel like I'm gonna make a mistake or something. 
Oh no, our tray is in there backwards. Uh, Ready? Pliers. I would do this not with tongs. You're oh, gonna, come on. You're gonna burn yourself. No, I'm such a good girl with tongs. Okay, it's your feet. Where's your tool? Scalpel. Doctor. Dang it, it's not in. That's fine, I can adjust. There, now we're good. Ha! Can I put my steak on now? Yeah, it's time. Let's right. get this. You pull it out. Oh, I gotta lower it down a little bit first. Woo! Listen to that sizzle. All right, let's start our timer. Siri, start a stopwatch. For how long? 90 seconds. 90 seconds, counting down. So I don't know exactly how long this is gonna take. We're gonna check it after 60 seconds, but at this temperature with how thick this steak is, I think 90 seconds per side should give us a pretty good sweet spot, but of course, we'll check the color and the sizzle on the top and make sure it's where we want it. While our steaks are in there, I've got a minute left. I'm gonna whip up a quick resting butter to drizzle on top. Usually I do it with softened butter, but today I'm gonna to be using some melted butter, a few tea, or sorry, a few tablespoons of melted butter, some Worcestershire sauce, some grated garlic, all the black pepper that you wanted to put on your steak before, put it in your resting butter for after, and then some fresh thyme because it's one of my favorites, but you can use your favorite herbs there. We're at 60 seconds in, almost 75. Brandon thinks it's time to flip. Oh, we're getting there. I don't there. know. I think we're good. Those edges were just looking a little charred, but the middle could go longer for yep, sure. Yep. Let's go back in. I think 30 more seconds, and then we should be good to go. Dang it, you were right. Um, we, the first one we did, we actually went two minutes on the first side. So this is just kind of up to you and your eyeballs and what kind of crust you like to see. All right, let's pull it out and see if we're ready to flip. Yeah. We're there now. Look at that. Hee hee hee. Okay, hey Siri, set a timer for 90 seconds. 90 seconds, counting down. That's gonna be a crispy steak. I'm so excited. I'm really curious about the doneness all the way through though, because you know, we usually do a reverse sear where it's that low temp first and then the high finish sear. I think you could actually use this in combination with a smoker, get that smoky flavor first and then a rip roaring sear to finish. We'll have to see how it is edge to edge. More testing required. It sounds like a good idea. More steak, always good idea. Yeah. All right, my resting butter is done. Our steak, Timer just went off. Let's pull it out and take a look at it. Yay! You got your thermopen handy over there? But, yeah. No? Where'd it go? Oh, it's clocking about 105 to 110. Should we give it just a few more seconds? Yeah, let's okay. do it. That's a little blue We're for me. We're very close. Leave it low. Look at this flavor juice. Now with the adjustable sides on this, we probably could have dropped it down too to finish that cooking process without more sear, but I think more sear is more better. So I feel fine with it. Now while this is still bubbly, I'm gonna drizzle on some of our butter and just let the heat from the steak warm up the garlic and the herbs and really melt all the flavors from the butter into the steak itself. Because remember, this was just salt. If you wanted just salt, fantastic. Have just a salty steak. But after gives you the opportunity to introduce a lot of different flavors that I think make steak yummy. Yeah. This recipe is actually on the website for this resting butter. And if you guys haven't tried this one, 
it's a total game changer for steak. It's th the only way I do ribeyes now. Reverse sear with resting butter on top. It just, it doesn't get better. All right. We did, probably didn't give this long enough to rest. At home, rest it longer. We're really hungry. I don't know what to tell you. Really, really hungry. So hungry. Take off the bone. Oh my gosh. Listen, that might be a little overcooked on the inside, but it's so crispy on the outside, I would definitely still eat it without complaint. I mean, it's not the same coast to coast pink that you're gonna see with a reverse sear that's low temp and then a high finish, but I think the doneness inside is actually quite beautiful. I mean, listen, that was under five minutes and I got steak on my cutting board. I think we did it. It's fine. I think one of the biggest complaints of all propane based cooking is that it misses some of that smokiness and some of the flavor that you're gonna get from a smoker or from charcoal grill. And I think that's still true here, mm -hmm. but the texture and the consistency of the crust on here is next level. And I do think this would be really fun to play with as kind of that like final sear in a reverse sear situation. Yeah, that could turn out beautiful. Mm. But sometimes you just want to steak him. Three minutes. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I would eat this all day. It's so good. <laughs> mm. Do you want to send us off, Brandon? I'm going to eat this. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out while we experiment. <laughs> this one was fun and tasty. And we're all hungry, so we're going to eat. Bye. See you next time, guys. Mm.